Shout my hip hop since 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com. Call is now being recorded. I can't call. I can't call. I'm gonna let you know uh, we're recording the call and everything. First and foremost, we we appreciate your time. I definitely, I definitely know you're a busy man. So we appreciate your time rocking with us today. Now, uh, you know, yeah. we recently just we recently saw you at Clark Atlanta, and I, I wanted to elaborate on your project that you have coming out. Uh, we know that you're single right now. Everybody has been heating up the streets, but recently you dropped the remix to Everybody featuring Little Wayne and Ludacris. Can you elaborate on why you chose to go with those two artists? I mean, you know, um, originally when I first done the record, I heard Wayne on it. So I was thinking about putting them on the original version and then just, you know, within time and, and things like that, I had to just put the record out. So I always had Wayne in mind for the record. And um, I didn't want to do something different, man. I didn't want to put nobody on there who everybody was expecting me to put on it. I wanted to put somebody on that I never worked with, you know. Um, to me, to just to me to just keep keep doing things that's fresh. So that one made me reach out to Luda, you know. And I'm a fan of Luda. I ain't never heard a wag verse from Luda, period. So you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So I, I felt like, and I had Wayne verse first. So after I got Wayne verse, I was like, man, who going who gonna deliver to the magnitude that Wayne is? You know what I'm saying? Because I could have put a lot of people on it. Like I said, I ain't never heard of oh, first one ludicrous didn't go crazy, so that's why I went with him. Okay, okay. So also talk to me about your growth in, in the past year, you know, from, from your last studio album I Am, uh, up until your up and coming project. Talk to me a little bit about the growth that you've experienced. <clears throat> Man, I think I learn something every day. So, you know, there's growth to me, you know. Every day I go in the studio, I think I get better every single day, so um, if it's just with the way I pick production to my own deliveries, you know, I'm doing three three to five songs a day on a, on a normal day. So it's almost like practice, like you never have enough practice, you know. So I, I just think every day I'm getting better. Okay, I can totally dig that. Now, one of the biggest songs of 2014 was I Know with you and Rich Homie Quine. So talk to us a little bit about how you two linked up for that single. Man, I know what actually the last record I recorded for the AML. Like, I had turned the project in and everything. And me and Rich Holman was on the phone like a couple of weeks, like, yo, we got to get in, we got to get in for the. I'll tell him I want to get him on the album before I turn it in. So, it was the last record I he had got off the road in Atlanta. I flew up to, my, up to Atlanta to meet with him. We went in the studio, done one song. It was, I know. It was it. It was the last song. And the only song we had done in the session, and we just <laughs> knew like it was on the beat drop, and it, and it, and he got to saying the chorus out there. I knew it was a smash. Okay, okay. Now recently, you also you you performed at the Memphis Grizzlies home uh, home opener. Uh, I know back in like 2010, 2011, I want to say you had a song uh, that was kind of anointed the Memphis Grizzly anthem. Uh, it may, it may have yeah. been an unofficial anthem, uh, but it was definitely anointed as the Grizzlies anthem. And then, as I just gave mention to this year, you had the opportunity to actually perform in front of the home crowd. So, give us a little bit about that experience. Man, it's always, it's always love, you know, and it's always special to to perform in front of your hometown crowd, you know, and to do it on that magnitude and the FedEx form in front of like eighteen some thousand people sold out. Uh, you know, you can't even describe the energy and the feeling of, of of somebody like me who used to hustle two blocks away from the same arena. You know what I'm saying? You know, my hood, I used to hustle in, you know, two, three blocks from the same arena. So just to, just to reflect and think back what I was doing, you know, five, seven years ago to when I was, to where I was in now. And that's what I was thinking when I was on, out there on the court, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's dope. That's very dope. Now, wh- one of the things that kind of goes along with your with your Gotti is definitely hustle. Uh, you know, a lot of people they 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 associate 
the 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 art of hustle, and you know, no pun intended, with you and with your career, and it doesn't necessarily, you know, mean a street hustle because now you become a businessman uh, who uses those still those those hustle forms and, and the, the things you learn hustling in the streets to have success as far as the music game is concerned. But for those who are looking to get into the music world who may have a background in hustling, can you explain one of the biggest misconceptions that you found when you first came into the rap game? Um, when I first came into the rap game, I mean, hustle is hustle. You know what I mean? No matter what you hustle in, you know, I think it's the same strategy pretty much. You know, it's just different rules, different games. You know, what I had to learn in this music game is that, you know, a lot of things that mean something in the street don't mean nothing to industry people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, you know, fake head rappers and shit, so... You know, the things they stand on in the morals are way worse in the streets. Like the things you will lose your freedom for or, you know, have to, you know, the things that will put you in a, in, a, in a bad space in the street. You know, niggas get away with it every day in his music business. You know what I'm saying? You know, mm -hmm. so being able to relate to that and, and the function in that was kind of hard for me. Hmm. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm quite... I'm sure there are a lot of artists in, in the Memphis area who constantly give you music. They may give you CDs or ask for your email to toss you music and to toss you beats. But you recently, uh, you know, you kind of put an artist under your wing, Snooey Wow, and he's been having a, a great deal of success as of recently, uh, you know, with the whole C uh, CMZ excuse me, movement and everything like that. What was it about Snooty that, you know, made you want to work with him or put him under your wing? I mean, he made he made hit records, you know. What I mean, I think he's a dope artist. He made hit records, you know. His first record we put out with Yayo. The second record was made me all these hit records, you know. He only two records in. His next record, she a keeper smash, featuring me and August Alcina. But you know, like like I'm connected to the streets, like in Memphis and other cities too. So. You don't necessarily have to send me music to give it to me because it's too hot. I'm going to hit you before you hit me. You know, mm -hmm. I say that to say I reached out to Snooty Wow. He didn't reach out to me. You know what I'm saying? There's me being a world was popping in the street. Hmm. Hmm. I definitely respect that. Now, you're coming up on 15, 15 years, excuse me, strong in the game. You've been doing your thing since about 99, 2000, I'll say. I know you've been rapping longer than that, but as far as people actually having a spotlight under the Yo Gotti name, we'll say about 2000, the year 2000. So uh, explain to me, if you can, you know, from, from the time of your, your self-explanatory and life and back to the basics, live from the kitchen up until now, explain to me, I don't want to say growth, ex explain to me why, how longevity has worked for you, like why you're still such a prominent name in the hip-hop game after 15 years in. Man, uh, in the street where you say good dope in itself, you know, this. I think that's the same thing in music. Like good music, it 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 it, it, it still itself. It, it stay around. Consistency, you know. Uh, basically, it's just consistency and good music. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm speaking reality. Like reality ain't never going nowhere. And what I'm talking about people living every day. So I don't see how you can get tired of what you're living every day. <laughs> it's always gonna be room. It's always gonna be room to listen to that. This shit like Thursday. I dig that. I dig that. I also know you have a good relationship uh, with a Philly native, Dream Chasers on Meek Mill. You guys had the song "Fuck You." I know you jumped, uh, jumped on a couple uh, uh, tracks as well with him on his mixtapes with LeBron James, Howie Rose, different different tracks. You guys know no better. Have you talked to Meek since he's been on his uh, prison stint? Have you had a chance to talk to him and give him any advice? Y'all talk to Meek all the time. Yeah, Meek ain't tripping. Meek on the phone like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah Meek, Meek in good spirits, man. He's just ready to come home and do his thing. You know what I'm saying? He get out, he going to go crazy on it. You know, when he get out, he going to go crazy in his booth. But, you know, Meek the homie. Okay, okay. So can we can we can we possibly be looking forward to a Gotti and Meek track, you know, maybe early two thousand fifteen once he get out on the streets? Can we look forward to a new track from you two brothers? Of course, of course. You're gonna hear plenty of me and Meek records, you know, and I said that's homie. 
It's like my brother, so you know. I rock with me heavy, so you you on her plan of them tracks. Now let's talk about your upcoming project, the Art of Hustle. Um, how many tracks do you have done? Is the project complete already? Are you still looking to put the finishing touches on the project? Who are some producers or features that you have on the project? I mean, the project could be complete, but it's just the way the way I record. I never stop recording, so. Like, I record to the last single day because you never know what you're going to come up with. You know, I don't work with, like, um, man, so many people, so many different producers from Mustard to Drama Boy to Timberland to um, Boy Wonder. Man, I mean, a lot of people, I just, a lot of a lot of upcoming hot producers, too, you know. So uh, me and Big Sean got a crazy record on now. Me and Ty Dollar Sign did something crazy. Um it's a lot of records, man. Like, like, man, I don't really know which one's going to make the final list shit. Okay. There's some joints on us. Okay, okay. That's definitely some dope information to look out for. That's definitely some dope information. Now, even though you're a Memphis native, I know you spend a lot of time in the Atlanta area here in Atlanta. So what is it about Atlanta, you know, that, that keeps you here or that drives you to this point? I mean, you know, Atlanta just like it's a lot of talent coming up through there, you know what I'm saying? And in the South it's like a hood, you know what I'm saying? So, um not only that, but I've been in Miami a lot, you know, so I'm in Miami a lot, Atlanta a lot, Memphis a lot. I just be moving around, man, you know. one of one of one of the biggest singles I'll say that, that you've had to date, uh, in the mainstream world was five star chick or five star bitch, however you wanna say it. So for for our female fans and our female listeners, what is your definition of a five star chick? Oh uh, man, a five star chick to me like this shit all mental. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't really care nothing about how you looking and what you got on. That shit don't mean none of your man ain't together. You know what I'm saying? Like you got your own goals, your own vision. Can't no nigga deteriorate you from what you are and what you want to be and what you stand for. That's a five star to me because you ain't got to have a dollar. We'll get y'all the other bullshit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I also understand uh, outside of you being a hustler in the music world, you've also kind of moved into the, the, the food industry. And I, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, you opened up a restaurant or a lounge in the Memphis area. Could you tell us about yeah, that, the name of the restaurant, where it is, and what you know, what made you jump into the food industry? Yeah, you know, she had the private that's in Memphis. Uh, it's an upscale dining restaurant. Um, I mean, I think it was a good opportunity, man. I'm into real estate, you know what I mean? So I buy a lot of land, a lot of houses, commercial property. So I, um, you know, I inquired the building, and then you know we we set up. It's a family business with my mother, and brothers, and sisters. So you know, just so fun to get back to the community, man, to get jobs in our city, which is needed, and and, and as well have a cool business, family business at the same time. You know, if y'all slide through Memphis, make sure you check out Prevay. Uh-huh. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now, I also know that your tour DJ, uh, DJ Smalls, you two have a great relationship. DJ Smalls, his whole Southern Smoke movement has been doing a lot in the South for a long time. So how did you two link up, and what is your guys' relationship like? Man, I did my first cocaine music mixtape with Smalls and Bigger Rankings. I did it with both of them, Cocaine Music 1, you know what I mean? I think that's when we kind of met. We just had a cool relationship and so then whether we were working with each other or not, we always communicated, got his opinion on what I was doing. You know what I mean? Like I'm the type of person that's like with my team, it don't matter, like I could be working with a whole other DJ doing a tape, but I still look go to whoever was around me in the beginning stages and I always get their opinion on the music and the strategy and the formula that I'm doing. That's dope. I definitely, I definitely, I can definitely see that and understand that. With you being such into real estate as you just gave mention to, and you buying property, and you know, you now having a restaurant. A lot, the NBA nowadays, with you as you know uh, being at the forefront performing recently, the NBA is definitely shifting to to more of the hip hop culture and the urban culture, and and you know, getting different players. While A is now a representative for the Washington Wizards, we know about Jay Z and the Brooklyn Nets. Drake and uh, his situation with the Toronto Raptors, but you already have such a great rapport 
for the Memphis Grizzly in the whole Memphis area. Could we possibly ever see you looking to be an owner, a part owner, or getting, you know, anything going as far as with the Memphis Grizzlies or any other NBA team? Yeah, I want to buy, I want to buy into the Grizzlies. You know what I mean? I ain't, that's what I want to do. I ain't trying to work. I want to own some. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how I move. We want we buy our ownership. So 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 when that happens, then when we hear when we hear Yo Gotti's music and CMG's music all throughout the uh, the FedEx Arena, or or will it be diverse? What would, what would life in the arena be like with you first day on the on the job as the new owner of the Grizzlies? I probably just be kicked back, man. You know, just kick back, cool. And I wouldn't do too much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Now, I, I know you also, uh, earlier this year, you were on tour with uh, Wayne and Drake for the Wayne vs. Drake tour. What was that like? And, and on, on the tour, what was the craziest encounter you had with a fan? Oh, man. Um, you know, I, be, I, I fuck with the fans, you know, so I'm the people's people. I'm always out there hollering at them and kicking it with them. You know, we just be kicking shit with the fans. But they tour, though. You know, that tour was a great experience, you know what I'm saying, to be on it. You know, to be able to get out and go and play in front of them other people. So, you know, it was a good experience for me. Coming up in the Memphis area, I know uh, you have, like, your Memphis Legends, of course, 8-Ball, MJG, 3-6 Mafia have been doing their things for a while. We gave mention to uh, Sooty Wild. He's definitely doing his thing, working with you and also Solo. You have artists like Young Dolph. Memphis right now has a lot of artists who are doing positive things, not only in the Memphis area, but in the hip-hop game, period. Could you tell us, uh, for those who haven't had the chance of being in Tennessee or in Memphis, exactly what Memphis' whole hip-hop scene is like? Hello? 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 You there? Sound like we lost him. Hello? Did it cut off? Terrell? You bet. Yeah, I'm here. Oh. Uh, is okay. Gotti here? I thought you had Terrell. Oh, okay. Um, just the last question, Terrell, okay? All right, that's fine. Okay. Gotti, uh, can you um, explain to us about the uh, Memphis music scene? You know, I'm, I'm quite sure with the uh, yeah. the likes of the legends, 8-Ball, MJG, you had 3-6 Mafia doing their thing for a while. You, of course, Snooty Wiles doing his thing. You have upcoming acts like, like the Young Dogs. For those who've never been in the Memphis area... Can you explain to us what the Memphis music scene is like? Oh, um, man, I think I think the Memphis music scene is good right now, you know, as far as, like, with multiple people doing their thing. You know, uh, like you said, of course, I'm not just doing my schnoodies. You know what I'm saying? You got Juicy popping, you know what I'm saying? And it's, and it's upcoming artists every day who coming out of Memphis. So, you know, I think it's a good thing for the city. Amen, amen. For those who want to stay in tune with your movement via social media or Twitter, how can they go about following you? Uh, at Yo Gotti K on this Instagram, you know, and all the rest of them. Uh, you know, Yo Gotti Music dot com. You know, that we put all our exclusives out first. You know, just follow, just follow. You know what it is, your man, Eldorado Hip Hop since 1987. God, we definitely appreciate your time, man. We'll be looking forward to a lot more new music for you, from you. We'll be looking forward to you, uh, you and Meek single as soon as he hit the streets and continue with all your success, man. Keep the hustle alive. Uh, okay, cool. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. 100. Shout my hip hop since 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com. Oh, you, it's a feel. I, I, I feel yeah, like it's a Philly. I, I ain't mad though. I mean, but I, it's just that beard command a certain kind of energy. And okay, like, okay. And it's just like, hey man, I was like, yeah, let me get this. Okay. And I'm now I'm just creep. People ain't saying I, I look like somebody else. No, I'm no. just creep. You know what I'm okay. saying? So yeah, the beard. I ain't never cutting off. Women love the beard. <laughs> <laughs>